So, inside your box, don't open them yet, you are going to find two pairs of cotton gloves, one magnifying glass, a photograph, and a list of instructions. To help you to examine the photograph, make sure to wear the cotton gloves that are handling pictures. Me and Maddie. Guys, guys, okay, let's, uh, so, what else do you see? Wait, wait they are in the... In the basement, I was shocked. 18, 1536. No. 1536. I think, I think it's 18 something. 1955. You're the closest. 1956. So um, this is probably a bit earlier, maybe in the 40s. 1957. Did you figure out where this was happening? In Hamilton. Good. How'd you know it was in Hamilton? What 65 train? Okay, it is in Hamilton. Very good. Do you guys know what Hamilton is known for? What kind of industry? Steel. Steel. Good. Good. <clears throat> so this is actually making steel. She is a lady sewing. Good. When did you think this took place? I'm going like just like how. And you're like, when? Hi. You're like, oh, fine. When? 1947. Where? Shop. Where? Shop. So we think it's a rocket now. 1998. It's probably a bit older than that. Take a look at the technology and what he's wearing and see. 1882. Wire. Why? Then who? Why? Building, see. building radio slash fixing radios. Who? Old fashioned lady. Who? A man. What? Two horses. Where? Prairies. One day. Why? So we can get good crops slash plowing. How? Horses pulling plow. Dazzling! The first child of a born with a doctor in attendance. My grandmother was the midwife of the, of the northern North Hamilton, and she delivered all the children in the North End. She was the 11th child in a family of 12, and the first child to be born with a female doctor. She was the president of Hadassah for many years. She worked with Beth Jacob and other community organizations, and so did her husband. Granddaughter of Israel. And granddaughters of Israel. Her mother worked in the store, and she has a story that one day her mother was in labor, so she went upstairs and had her baby, just without almost saying anything. The, the store got busy, so he said, Sima, Shima, come, come, I need you. Yeah. So she says, who do you want? Me or the baby? <laughs> Goldie's father and her two younger brothers, her two older brothers, Willie and Joe, went up to the country to Chesley, Ontario, and they opened a scrap metal During business. The and her sister Margaret worked in the kitchen there, and then Goldie worked there after when Margaret went back to school. So you're translating your image, and you're taking it from one surface and transferring it to another. When you are done tracing over all of your pencil lines, you're going to take off your paper, put your pen down, and then take your pencil again. And then go over your lines so that they're deep. We have inking and we have printing. Give it a tap.
could happen. <laughs> so we could have fun. So it is a miracle. My first a miracle. Yay. Actually, my eighth. My grandparents were born in Bohemia, which was then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. As a young couple, they were sent to a lovely little border town in Germany, where grandmother's uncle, who had a large lumber business, had bought a large stand of trees in the Bohemian forest. He needed a reliable person to look after cutting and chipping and chose my grandfather. The supervising didn't take all his time and he opened a small grocery store. They were the only Jews in the area, but integrated well with the local population and stayed when the job with the lumber was finished and finished. They were well respected. We often visited them and met other relatives at their house. While the grown-ups had much to talk about, we children played in the store, a large room with a wall full of drawers with raisins, plums, nuts, etc. On shelves were glass jars filled with candies. The front of the wall, in front of the wall, was a large counter and with chalk. Grandmother or grandfather kept track of the customer's purchases when the store was open. When we visited, it was a holiday and the store was closed and we played store. Yeah. In 1933, when Hitler came to power, my grandparents sold the store and moved back to Bohemia, which became part of the Czechoslovak Republic after the First World War. All that time, my grandparents put out, at that time, my grandparents put an ad in the paper thanking their friends and customers for their friendship and business. My grandparents' successor put an ad in the paper that he, he would try to serve the community as well as Mr. Ornstein and hopes that he would be as well liked. In 1939, my grandparents came to join us in Canada. Unfortunately, grandfather's heart gave out and he died after seeing everybody in their, ho in their homes on the farms near Hamilton. My grandmother lived for many years alternating between the two daughters and keeping very busy. Mm. Helping wherever there was work to do. No! 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 Okay guys, everyone back.
now we're doing it on Abby's great grandmother and how she and her great grandfather were like owning a tobacco stand and yeah. Running. Will you come and help me with the tobacco stand today? No, I have to study Torah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later. Can I buy some tobacco? Well, we have this model. It, it, you put it, this in here like this, and then you attach this, and it's 14 euros. Would you like to buy it? Okay. Seven, 14. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, the end. <laughs> Well, this is a, a story about that my dad told me about how when he was working in the special effects and there was a bit of an accident with the uh, fire. It was a regular day at the special effects studio. Alon was preparing the fire for the next day. At this point, Alon was completely on fire. <laughs> Help me! You should really put him out. You okay. know it's the right thing to do. Here, feel better. <laughs> Ta -da! So this story is about how my great grandfather started a business in London, Ontario for a butcher shop and how it came to Hamilton. Son, come here. Yes, father? Son, I think you need to go to Hamilton, Ontario and start a butcher shop there. I will, father. I'm a butcher, just like I told my father. I think I'm going to up this a little bit more. I think I'm going to make it JD Pro Meat Products. And I'm, the symbol is going to be cherries because there's so many cherry trees growing around here. Um, son, I do <laughs> you the business. <laughs> Enjoy it. Okay, thank Bye. you, Dad. No. So, my great grandfather worked at JD Meat Products. My grandfather worked there. My father worked there. And maybe one day I will tip. Yay! My father came to Hamilton from Russia when he was 13 years old. His name was Isidore Skop, and he thought he would have more opportunities if he changed his name, his last name, to Scott. He moved to Toronto with his family and married. His first wife died after having two children. He married again and they had me, so there were three girls. My father became a butcher and he and my mother worked in the shop. They opened at 4 a.m. and my father would then deliver parcels. Even at that hour, some people would come in and spend time talking. We lived above our butcher shop at Caroline and York. On our veranda, there were 10 families. We had boarders to help us pay the bills. We remained friends with some all our lives. One was a baker with his own bakery. Benny, Yuma, his Jewish name, brought his girlfriend and ultimately they married. She adopted our family.
Edie's first job was at Jean Walters, who made handmade hats. Uh, my father was in the scrap business. After a while, his two sons uh, worked in the uh, shop, which was called Canadian Iron and Metal. Uh, there were six children in the family. Um, one of the sons was uh, conscripted during the war to, by the British Supply Board and was sent um, to Cleveland and he stayed there. Um, my father immigrated here from Lithuania probably before 1900. He was 17 when he came and he came by himself. Um, he came to Hamilton because he was a friend of Jacob Goldblatt's and he was here. Uh, she went to Westdale Collegiate and she enjoyed skating in Victoria Park. She met her husband on a blind date and this was something arranged by Charlie Macklin. Right, correct? <laughs> okay. Her father worked uh, probably six days a week at least. Um, the most outstanding period that Edie remembers mm -hmm. was uh, 1943. She um, joined or volunteered to the Red Cross and went to England, to Basingstoke in Hampshire, and worked there for a year in a hospital, uh, doing everything that a nurse would do. It was a very enjoyable year. Very few Jewish girls went. One of the memories that she uh, treasures most is going to Buckingham Palace and on the balcony there was the Queen Mother, Princess uh, Elizabeth and Princess Margaret waving at them. Oh. So our goal is to simplify our images and to fill the entire plate with ink so that we get a nice colorful print Feel the pressure getting under. So you can see that it did bleed a little bit there. But other than that, it looks My father had a business in Hamilton selling car parts, mm -hmm. and his name was Fred C. Rubin. We all had a good childhood. When I was five, I started playing the violin. Mm -hmm. Later, I played in the Hamilton Ladies' Symphony. Mm -hmm. I worked at the Children's Aid for 23 years mm -hmm. as a legal secretary. And Muriel lived in, was it Glasgow? Yeah. And you brought your children here. They came, came to a different world when they came here. That's so. for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, what it actually is. That's new. It's, it's a frozen picture. So it's as um, though somebody has taken your photograph. And I want to be able to tell exactly who you are. So if you're a cowboy or if you're a basketball player or a hockey player, oh, I should be able to tell that. So is this easy to tell what's yes, going on? Yeah. Yes. Actually, it's some of them are running very clear, right? <laughs> I like theirs very good. Yeah. Who's the teacher? Ben. Our car is broken. Yes. Where's the part? Can you fix it? Yes. Let me just. 
check this out with my brother. Do we have a schedule? Yep. Okay, Stephen, what do you mind fixing this car? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll put it back in the right way. Easiest <laughs> pie. And freeze again. The Kindness of Strangers I arrived in Hamilton at the age of 15 with my parents and younger sister. There were 39 of us in the group and 29 stayed in one old farmhouse that was cold and empty. The Hamilton Spectator sent a reporter and photographer to write about our immigration and our story. A young married couple, Maury and Rose Silbert, read about us and came to the farm. They took a bus, they had no other means of transportation, to find out if we were really Jewish immigrants. From then on, they came off and we became lifelong friends. They asked the Jewish community to donate household goods, whatever they could spare, and we did get some beds, pots and pans, towels and sheets. With other words, we had something to work with. He also introduced us to a Dr. Sole. He was Hungarian, but he spoke German, and we could communicate with him. He never asked for any money. One of the immigrants had to have an, uh, an emergency appendectomy, but the Hamilton General Hospital wouldn't accept him because he didn't have any money. Well, Dr. Sole approached the neighbors, approached the Jewish community, and they paid for his surgery. Another kindness I cannot forget was that after school, a group of schoolgirls stayed with Hannah and me, and from the Eden's catalog, we learned the vocabulary. I was very sad when the Eaton's catalog <laughs> was no longer yes. published. Mm -hmm. Can we see time? No. So, you know what? I have a surprise for you. Today, we're going to actually see time. And I have an example for you. This is something that each of you are going to go out with. And it's a time machine because it captures time. This is me. That's you? This is my great grandmother. Oh, wow. We were so weird. We were in Papa when we first got married. Papa was a prison guard in Germany. The person that you have been drawing, I want you to write their name. Then their profession. And if they had several professions, please write them down. Okay? I put them under the picture. Perfect. Papa's grandfather, so it's your... 
we can ask our grandparents about things that happened in the past. So this is why we're using transparent material. It's like peeking into time and we can see different stages. project doing the transparent because of how easy it is to make something so cool. So Molly begins with her memories. My early memories are five kids and my mother and father in a cottage. Um, they came from Europe and married in New York and came to Hamilton because it was a smaller Jewish community. My father drove a truck delivering ice, and kids would chase after the truck to collect the ice chips off the blocks of ice. <laughs> you remember that? And they paid to 10 cents for a 25-pound block of ice. Yeah. Okay. Then Molly moved to 85 Victoria North. Mm -hmm. She was probably about 12. Yeah. Her father was doing much better in his jobs. He drove a truck. And one of the, her fondest memories, it, the new house had a great big bedroom mm -hmm. and finally a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> Molly was in the orchestra at Central Collegiate where she mm -hmm. played violin mm -hmm. and stopped playing when she was about 15 years old. Molly went to work for her father and answered the phone for solder coal yeah, at Dundurn and Melbourne. It was a little mm -hmm. tiny office. Okay. Oh, that's near where I live. Pardon? I live right yeah. near there. <laughs> she got married to Lou around 19, in around 1940, got pregnant and quit working for her father. She's very, very proud of her two brothers, Max, who was a lawyer. He went to school in Toronto. And Ben Sauter was the moneymaker in the family. He was a self-made businessman with no post-high school education. Well done. You like that? <laughs>